So we are in our final day of working on our animation project. So if I go to assignments to shortcut to it, instead of going through all the intro materials of the unit modules, I'm going to scroll down to assignment three, where we post. And just a nice reminder is on that assignments page is a supplemental information link from our digital honors students of semesters past where they walk you through the steps of what we are doing in this semester, this section, this afternoon section, of using freeware. The two freeware sites we use, PhotoP for all the raster imaging, and then easygif.com maker for the timing of the individual frames as a GIF. So it goes through all the ways to do that. So this is under assignments. Now, of course, you also have my YouTubes and you have my full explanation, but that's just in slides pretty direct for the basic information for how you turn just pixel-based images into an animated stack of images. So if I go to post here, this is what we've been working on. There are three requirements for this transformation animation. They are a rough storyboard sketch. So if you haven't posted anything for assignment three yet, and its deadline is 11.59 tonight, make sure you at least post your rough storyboard sketch. The second thing is our finished GIF animation, which I haven't finished in the demo yet. I'm ready to do it, but I just need to put them through gifmaker.me and output it, right? And then, once we have our finished GIF animation, we are going to make what's called a refined storyboard. And that refined storyboard is going to cleanly lay out nine frames from our animation. Even if our animation is 150 frames, we're going to pick the nine that tell the story. right? And we're going to lay it out as a raster image in a way that would print effectively. This is a great layout test before we have to print for our midterm critique. And then I have another link there to that same digital mentorship presentation on using the freeware. And then of course there's all the things in YouTube. So to continue in YouTube, oh I did finish my animation, <laughs> okay, but anyway, I'm going to work with it a little bit more. So here's my rough storyboard sketch. This was my GIF animation. It was from easygiftmaker.com. But this was just taking it exactly as I inputted it. So all the frames, they are at 20 milliseconds per frame. That's the default when you take it into the site. That means it's five frames per second. It's good for an animatic. But I can now go in and customize that timing because I like the hat movement, but I don't like that there's no t pause <laughs> in between the hat moving, right? So I'm going to lengthen some of those frames, which I can do all by what's called animating on the stage, by playing with the, the frame rates. And then once I'm happy with the animation, then I can output the refined storyboard. All right, so let's open up our files. I have it nicely organized in my folder here. I have my stage file and my assets file. They both need to be opened in PhotoP. And even though it was just Monday when we were working on it, it's only been two days. It's always good to remind yourself where you were and what you're doing. So I, I opened my assets first. Now, instead of dragging and dropping my stage file, I have to go to File Open in PhotoP. And then I click on my stage file. And the whole point, like we've been doing all throughout this assignment, is we have two PSD files open in PhotoP. One where we have all of our assets that we can play with to make our frames. Once we've made a frame, we do a non-destructive merge of it, copy it, paste it over to our stage. And our stage becomes our film strip, like so. So I have two options here. I've already outputted all of these frames. Because once you're done with your stage, 
and you save your stage, then you, and if you're going to do it all with freeware without using Photoshop, right, or any program you have to pay for, uh, then you have to save each of these layers as its own JPEG and number them in order. So I did that, and I put them all in this for folder. So I have 32 frames that tell my story. And now what I'm going to do is move them to the second site that we use, which is gifmaker.me. It's linked in those slides, the mentorship presentation, right here. And it's also linked in the assignment right here. Because for whatever reason, it can actually be tough to find it when you're just doing Google searches for it. And this is just a really direct one. There are several GIF generators online, but this gives you the most direct control in the simplest way. All right, so now I'm going to do exactly what it says. Notice how there's no ads. It's very nice. So ad blockers work well on it. I'm going to take all my 32 frames. I'm going to drag and drop them in. <laughs> this is where I got hung up last time. This is just the new Mac operating system makes it hard to select multiples sometimes. Unfortunately, you can't just drag a folder in. And it's important that they're numbered so that if they go out of order, uh, holding down shift while I was doing it, right? And you shouldn't have to hold down shift while you're doing it, but let's try it. Ah, come on. There we go. So you get them in by hook or by crook. And it's going to take a little while. Don't panic. And then they will all process. This is why you want to check your image size in Photo P, that it's at 100 pixels per inch and 8 by 8 inches. Because you don't want to bring things in that are 300 pixels per inch and like 11 by 14 inches or something. That would take forever. And we are not printing animations. We are always seeing them on a screen. Okay, so they come in as their default. And you see it comes in as a film reel. You can see they're numbered. That's very helpful. And then this delay is in milliseconds. So now I've already outputted it once with the defaults. So I can view that. And I'm just going to view it with Chrome. Strange that I have two versions of Chrome here. But I'm going to move that Chrome window off to the side and make it pretty small so that I can now customize the, t the timing within easygift.com maker. <laughs> they should sponsor my, uh, my YouTubes. Though I don't see really how they make money, so maybe they should. Okay, so here's the timing. I like the movement of the hat up and down, so I'm going to keep 20 milliseconds for that. That's five frames per second which is way slower than, than finished animations, which are 24 frames per second, right? I like the little twinkles. That actually worked a lot better than I thought it would with the eye movement. So 21, frame 21 through 26, keeping that exactly as it is. What I don't like is here, frame 9 and frame 1. Here I want it to be longer. So I'm going to make these 50 milliseconds, which would be two frames per second, which is quite a bit slower than five frames per second. So I'm going to do it there. Maybe I'll change this to 30 so that the hands move a little bit slower coming in. And then once they start pulling the hat down, once it's all the way down, I'm going to make that last longer. I'm going to make that 40 milliseconds. And then the hat goes up just as fast. But now it comes up and it reveals the mustache with the holes taken out of it. I want that to take a long time, 50 milliseconds. And maybe when the hat first gets pulled down, I'm just going to slow it down a tiny bit to 30 milliseconds instead of 20. So then the next time is the reveal here. Now this is tricky, and this is going to mess up my animation a little bit. 
but because there are flames flickering, I can't change the frame rate without having the flames all of a sudden freeze a little bit longer. And I want those frames to move consistently. So when I'm pulling the hat up at this point and it reveals the flames, I'm actually going to slow everything down. So I'm going to make all of these 35 milliseconds. This is all just, this is editing, timing. You're playing it by ear. But every time there's a flame there, it's going to be 35. Then it's going to slow to 30 or speed up a little bit to 30. Then it's going to speed up again. And then it's going to reveal here and be 50. And then for the twinkling, I liked all the twinkling at that speed. So if I want to slow it down at all, I'm just waiting for it. Yeah, I kind of like that twinkling. Okay, so now I'm going to slow this one down to 30. Keep that at 20, keep that at 20, keep that at 20. All right. Good. Now, you'll notice, let's see. Yeah, I think that'll work. You can also add effects like crossfading. Crossfading is making a tween between each of your existing frames that plays with the opacity between the frame before and the frame after. It's not going to work for me because everything would look ghosted. But that could be something you play with that's animating on the stage. And I'm just going to say make a GIF. And then I wait. And then I can compare it with just using the same default timing on everything. This is one huge advantage of digital animation as opposed to traditional or analog animation. I can set individual frame rates. So the hat goes nice and fast down. But then it's a little bit slower. And then I'm going to hit save. And then I'll play them side by side and see if I can tell the difference. You want to save it first as a GIF. And once you're really happy with your GIF, save it as a GIF. But then you can also save it as an MP4 video. So if you're posting to social media and you're using all freeware tools, you cannot post a GIF to social media. You can post it online anywhere. It will play automatically. But you need MP4 files or movie files, you know, for most social media. And this is kind of designed for Instagram. So if I wanted to convert it to an MP4, I click MP4, convert GIF to MP4. But always save your GIF first. Now, what's the difference between a GIF and an MP4? An MP4 will support millions of colors, right? But it requires a player to play it. Like QuickTime is the standard one for Max. You see that pause? That's because it will not loop through unless you set your player to loop it, right? Whereas GIFs you can set to play automatically on any web browser but GIFs are limited to a maximum of 256 pixel colors. All right. But the great advantage of the GIF is how little memory they take. So I just saved them. They went to download. So there's my GIF. I'm going to keep both and see if it made any difference. So I'm going to open this with Google Chrome. I'm going to put them side by side. And I like the timing on the right. It feels just a little bit less rushed. And I could probably even exaggerate that timing a little bit more, which I probably will do, because I'm doing all just fractions of a second, milliseconds. Now, if you're really into animations, you can spend a lot of time playing with this. 
So I'm going to first do my, my gift maker, right?